In earlier videos, I showed you search bars like this one. We have a list screen here and when we type in something, our list gets filtered by that keyword we type in. So what's wrong with that? Like you can see here in the Figma file, this is a built-in Bravo component. And the only thing that does is it searches all the elements here in this list, which is fetched from the API and filters them. So we don't have the possibility to search through a whole app or even to search through the text that is linked behind, for example, that plant here. In this video, we'll build a search form that lets us scan our whole Airtable and displays the results in a separate page. Let's get started with the Figma file of this episode. We just have two screens here, one where the search will be happening and one where all the search results are displayed in a list. As always, you can find the Figma file in the description and customize that for your app. The search will be this container here and we have this input field which has the component input text tag here. We don't want any other input. So beware of not choosing input email, for example, that will only allow us to search for emails, which is not what we want. We want to search for regular text. The second part of this form is the action button. So this action submit tag is triggered when the user presses on go, for example, here, and this action submit takes all the inputs from our components, which is just this one component here and uses it with the API. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. First, let's take a look at the search results. We're going to use the air table I created for the blog example. So if you haven't seen that, we made a database of blog posts for monster hunting. So don't be confused by that. Here will be the list of articles related to the keyword. So we'll just have our blog image here and then our blog title. We're going to connect that also in Bravo Studio. When we look at the prototyping tool, we can see that I only have this one link that goes back to our search results, but you don't need any links from our button to the search results because this action submit tag actually lets us choose an action which happens after we hit submit. And in our case, we are just going to link that to the search results screen. I'm going to show you how that works when we're inside of Bravo Studio. Here in Bravo Studio is already where the interesting part happens. We are here in the data library for the blog app. This is what I created for the blog app tutorial. You can check that out in the description. I simply duplicated our hunting request here where we search for all the posts in the category hunting. But now we're going to add some stuff here. But to understand that first, let's have a look at the Airtable from that blog app example. The Airtable for our blog app has this post table. Here's all the information we have about the posts. So we have a name, we have a subheading a longer text with the actual article in it and then categories and also an image which we'll be displaying in our search results as well. So remember we have four things that we really can look for when we input text and this is exactly what we're going to take a look at. Now with the request I'm going to paste the request URL into PowerPoint. This is the request. So as always, we have airtable.com slash v0 version zero. I'm just going to make that red. So this is always the same for every request. Then we have our app ID, which will be different for you. I'm going to make that green. This is different for every database. So this links to our blog app in that case. And then we have our table. So posts, I'm going to color that in blue. Posts is our table. And now with this question mark, we can always add some parameters. So for example, if we would just do it like that, 
we would get displayed all of the inputs from our table posts inside of the database blog app. But we want to filter them. That's already what's been done here, filter by formula. A formula is like a rule set, which we're going to use to find something specific. So this is the next part. I'm going to color that in, let's say orange. And now this is the tricky part. When you work with formulas, you have different options, which are also listed here in the formula reference. We already used a couple of them. For example, the search formula here, we use that to find our categories and you can see this searches for the occurrence and then it returns empty if nothing is found and find returns zero. We could actually use search in our request as well. I chose find because in our example, it just makes no difference. And we're going to go back to some of these functions in a bit. As you've seen in the reference, find looks for a string, which is displayed here. So a string is just one or multiple characters. After the comma, it tells us where to look for that string. The string is in quotation marks here. It's important to use these quotation marks and not for example, this one. This is a variable from Bravo Studio. So that dollar sign and these brackets, this is the name of the variable. We're going to link that in a bit. But what you need to know is this is like a placeholder for something that we don't know yet. In our case, what the user will input in our search form. Concatenate joins together the text arguments into a single text value. So what does join mean? Just imagine it taking all the text we have in our table here and putting it into one giant bulk. And we're going to search that giant bulk instead of every text by its own. We need to concatenate because we don't want to search for only the category, but we also want to have the text, the subheading and the name in there. In our example, that means concatenate, join together, all the text we have for name, the text we have for subheading, the text we have for text and the text we have for category. So this is a huge pile of text and this will be searched for our variable. So the user input in your app, you would need to replace all of these names with the names you gave your rows. So if you had, for example, a CRM tool, this would maybe be name, but not subheading, but instead it would be email address and country. Just so you have like a visual of that. So to sum that up, we take our Airtable API, we go to our blog app database, we go to the table posts, and inside of posts, we're going to filter by a rule set. That rule set is find every post inside of posts and look in every text we have available and look for this keyword. Now I know that's already a little tricky, but now we need to do a real brain twister because we need to find the actual value our user put into our search bar. So we need to find this variable. Just to test that, I'm going to write dragon in here. And this would mean we're searching for all the posts containing the word dragon in either the name, the subheading, the text or the category. And when I hit send, I get returned ever wanted to kill a dragon because this has dragon in the, in the subheading, it has dragon in the category. So it makes total sense. And even in the text and the name, so there's dragon everywhere. So it makes sense that this would be the result when we search for that. If I search for, let's say grabbing, because I know that's one of my posts is called like that. Yes. So we see this is 
now in our response data. So in our search results, we don't get our dragon post no more because the word grabbing doesn't appear there. Instead, we get what to do when something is grabbing you. This is a different keyword, so therefore a different search result. We only see one search result here. We actually want to use all, so we would select all here and then select all the data we need. So we would need our data records. This needs to be selected at all times. We don't need that in our example, but if we would want to do some more linking, we would need that. But then only the image because we want to display each image for the search result and then the name. These will be the only things that will be displayed. So they are also the only things here in our selected data. And here we can already see this is our default content, killing your first dragon and then the attachment for that post. Okay, so now that we've seen, we get different responses depending on what we type in here. We want to go back to actually taking the user input. I'm going to write our variable here again, close that off with a bracket. And now you can see Bravo already highlights that blue because it realizes this is a variable. Where does this variable come from? This comes from the parameters. So you can see I have this variable here as the key and the value in this case is dragon. This is a example value again. Everything in here is replaced with dragon. So if I hit send now, you can see that I get the post concerning dragons again. Let's test that out with grabbing. And when I hit send, it's what to do when something is grabbing you again. So replacing our value here is just like replacing our value here. The reason we're doing that is this is just a temporary value for testing, so to say. But we want to have this variable from our user. So to do that, we're going to link that in our project. So here in our advanced search project, we can see that we have our screens here and I'm going to select the search screen and now the collection blog app because that is where our search request is and we're going to select that search request. The actual interesting part is now the search input because here we have two options either the content or the content destination. And inside of content destination, we're going to select our variable that we created earlier. So I'm going to hit search input and you can already see a third thing popped up, the response actions. Now what's the difference between content destination and content? Content would be search dot dot dot. So if you wanted to have something different in there, you could also get that from the database. That's not what we want in that case. We want to send the data, the user inputs in here. We want to send that. That's why it's called destination. We want to send that to our search input variable. So we can use that in our request URL. So what happened now is when I hit on go here, the search input will be sent to search input, our variable, and that will be used in our request. But this request does not happen on our search page, but on our search results page. So what we want to do here is we want to go to the page with the results. These response actions, you can see we have different options here. We could refresh the screen or we could even link to the browser. But what we want to do is go to a separate page because after the user hits go, we want to display the results and the results are on search results. Now the thing left is getting our search results. So we're going back and open our search results screen. So here we select the search again. In our frame, we have the image placeholder and the name of our posts. For frame, we want to select all records. And then inside of that record, we want to 
take the thumbnail for our image and the name to replace this name here. So what happens here with the search request? This is now the request that filters our Airtable for the keyword we entered in our first screen. Now that we first entered our keyword, we have the variable search input, which is used in our search get request here. I know this is pretty complex, so we're going to go through each step again. The user is on the search screen, and here he types in a keyword in our search bar, and then presses go. Through the action submit that happens when we hit go, the keyword the user typed into our search bar is sent to our variable search input. This is now not grabbing the sample data we put in, but is replaced with the keyword. At the same time, we get this response action. So we go to the search results. Inside of our search results, we have the get request with our search parameters. Remember that is this request. So now we're going to select all posts, but we're going to filter them by our rule set and find in all text, we're going to find this. This would be grabbing because that is our sample data, but because the user tapped on go, this search input is replaced with the actual keyword the user typed in. Knowing that all our results are filtered by this request and only the relevant posts are displayed, we now take the image and the names of those relevant posts and create a list with that. Pretty theoretical, let's take a look at that inside of Bravo Vision. So the user opens the app, sees this search bar, types in a request, for example, dragon, and hits go. When the user hits go, two things happen. Dragon will be inserted in our variable and we also go over to our search results page. I hit go and you can see our search results page loads with all the posts containing the keyword dragon. Let's go back and try that with a different keyword. Now I'm going to type in defense. And that now gives us all the posts containing defense. In that case, defense is a category. So these two posts contain defense. That means our search is actually working. If we combine the things we learned today with the concept of the conditional logic video, we can easily create more complex product filters, for example. If you want to continue getting the most out of Bravo Studio, consider subscribing. And as always, keep Bravo rising.